Merry, because we have a Merry Christmas for all the brethren that are in the chapel that got here after three (laughs) o'clock. Just Merry Christmas, chapel. We're going to bring you in some wings here in 30 minutes, some chicken wings. A lot of you caught Kendall being off key there. That's never happened. And we're not sure why it happened, but we'll find out. We have a committee working on that right now. Could we have a hand for Kendall and the Kendallinians? He's really something. Well, let me just tell you a story on Christmas. Um, On Sunday, I turned 69, all right? December the 29th, thank you, thank you. It is a great accomplishment not to be dead, okay? Uh, I turned 69, and mind you, at 2.32 in the afternoon. And so I will be the longest lived Nelson male. We all die at 68 and 67. I will die at 60. Well, I'll die sometime. (laughs) Sunday ain't here. (laughs) And thus, as being old, I could be retired now for four years. I'll have to begin Social Security next year. And so it is my God given right to A, raise tomatoes, (laughs) and to gripe. And so let me begin Christmas with all the things I hate. (laughs) Actually, it's all the things that I miss in my day from this day, the things that were better in my day, which is what old men do. I miss football players who don't preen and parade after every play. They don't do victory dances after water breaks. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I miss professional sports before free agency. And you could cheer for the team, not just for the jersey, that they wouldn't have revolving uh, players. I also miss the great boxers. Is there still boxing? It gave way to brawling. I miss the great boxers. I miss real cartoons. Thank you. I mean, there's a lot of character in sponges, but (laughs) I enjoy Bugs and Sylvester and Tweety and Yosemite and Foghorn Leghorn. I miss the Southwest Conference. I do. I miss kid shows. I mean, real kid shows. Ding Dong School, Captain Kangaroo, Mr. Rogers, and most of all, Icky Twerp. Icky Twerp. I miss great bands. Do they still have musical bands anymore? I miss Buddy Holly and the Crickets. I miss the Beatles. I miss Creedence. I miss the great groups, Temptations, Supremes, Motown. I miss 50s men that wore hats. I miss 50s women in gloves, pearls, hairdos, and heels. I miss clean comedy. I do. Matter of fact, I miss clean anything. (laughs) I miss fountain pens. I miss penmanship. I miss the writing of letters. I miss cursive writing. I miss being social apart from media. I miss front porches. I miss cars that were made of metal. (laughs) You know? Cars that were unique every year. And all you had to say was 57 Ford, Chevy, and everybody knew what you're talking about. I miss kids that play outside. I miss decency, public decency. I missed the ability to be embarrassed. Most of all, I miss the magic. Let me tell you what that means. Our day is a day of modern man, it is called modernism. It is where all there is, is what you see, what you can calculate. It's where nothing is above us, nothing invisible, nothing that you take by faith. It is called secular humanism, where there is no final authority, 
such as that which birthed our nation and for most of us, our generation, the foundation of the assumption of the infinite personal God and his revelation through the scriptures that was the womb out of which this country came that saw nature as a creation designed by God in magnificent and benevolent, man as the unique monarch of the cosmos in the very image of God, evil as something that was final evil, not just some subjective idea, but the objectivity of the satanic, of error as the doctrine of demons from the father of lies as virtue as inspired by the very character of God and the holiness of God, exalted by the angels with the six-winged seraphim singing, holy, holy, holy. I miss the magic. Today, down here, is all that there is. It is cold, it is dark, it is alone. I frankly don't know how a kid makes it growing up in the matrix of humanism of man that is orphaned in a silent universe and no one loves him and no one sees him and no one cares. Man that is now the stuff of dark sci-fi, Mad Max, The Walking Dead, The Book of Eli, 1984 by Orwell. Remember that, Vicky? That was scary. Logan's Run, filmed in Fort Worth. The time machine, Soylent Green. Soylent Green is people. Okay. (laughs) The war of the worlds. Man is now the mere top monkey. That's all he is. In an accidental existence, in a meaningless world, godless, materialistic, atomistic, a product of matter and forces and chance, a tragic accident with no standard, man becoming more sinful than more irrational as he learns to excuse his behavior and justify it, and then more perverse as passions run riot, and then violent, and then finally insane. Merry Christmas. Modernism that I just told you began actually in about the mid-1900s. That's where it, it came to fruition. And actually, what I'm talking about is not modernism. To be technically, it's called post-modernism. Modernism was from the 1850s to about the 1900s. And that is the belief that there was no God, but that we could find a replacement for God through science, through experiment, through rationalism, through politics, that we could find some ism that would replace God. Modernism is giving up, I'm sorry, postmodernism is giving up the search. It has been said that modernism, that philosophy is a blind man in an alley at midnight looking for a black cat. That is philosophy without God. Postmodernism is a blind man in an alley at midnight looking for a black cat that isn't there. That's postmodernism. And where we are today is a blind man in an alley at midnight looking for a black cat that isn't there, so man becomes the black cat. If I was to write a book on our present day, I would simply call it Cat People. (laughs) Because that is what we are. Men becoming God. And that is why we all at this time of the year love Christmas. Because for a brief night, we are allowed by culture to believe in what C.S. Lewis called the deep magic of hope. It is a, a, a brief night where we allow, are allowed to love one another, to sing ancient songs, and to sing it for good reason because of a historic memory that we have that's deep within our culture of a God who is there and who has spoken and who loves us, of a divine promise from a divine book to a divine nation, Israel, with the promise of a divine supernatural child born in obscurity and yet is called 
the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Emmanuel, God with us, of a mighty angel named Gabriel appearing to a common Jewish girl, a virgin named Mary, engaged to a carpenter named Joseph from the tribe of Judah, saying to her, you will bear a child and you will call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Israel forever and his kingdom will have no end. How can I do this, said the girl? I am but a virgin. The Holy Spirit shall overshadow you. The power of the Most High shall come upon you and the holy thing shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, behold, the bond slave of the Lord, be it to me according to thy word. And a census went out from Caesar to the cities of the fathers that all the Jews were to return to their home base. And Joseph and Mary proceeded to the little town of Bethlehem. And they came to an inn and finding no room in the inn, they were sent to a stable. And her time for giving birth came and she gave birth to a son and called him Jesus according to the name given by the angel and laid him in a manger. And at the same time, there were shepherds watching over their flocks by night when suddenly an angel of the Lord stood before them and said, peace, peace be with you. For I bring you good news of great joy that'll be for all the people. For unto you this day in the city of David, there is born for you a savior, Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling, which means a newborn that is lying in a manger, a donkey's feeding trough. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill, or peace toward men of God's good pleasure. Glory be to God in the highest and on earth. Heaven and earth are at peace. Contact has been made. God has entered into humanity. If that truth is true, if that posit is true, then that is the greatest idea ever known. That the infinite personal God alienated from us by sin has come into our experience and the word became flesh and became one of us. Amen. If that is true, philosophy is put to rest, religion is put to rest, truth is established, a standard is given, all things now revolve around that manger. And the shepherd said, let us immediately go straightway to Bethlehem and see this thing the Lord has brought to pass. And they saw the mother and her child, and they made these things known among all that would hear. And within two years, the family moved to a house. Do you have a manger scene where all the wise men are gathered at the stable? That's erroneous. <laughs> you have the manger scene, but then you need the wise men off behind the love seat. They're coming later. <laughs> Within two years, the family moved to a house in Bethlehem. And Magi, it's the smart guys among the Gentiles, the college professors. The shepherds were the lowly of Israel. The Magi are the seeking of the Gentiles. Christ met both of their needs. Magi came from the east, the country of Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Balaam, the prophet of Baor. And they came to Jerusalem 
These astrologers, these scholars, these philosophers, these students that were frustrated with empires and frustrated with philosophy and frustrated with politics and frustrated with religion and that the fullness of the time this boy came and they were looking for something outside of themselves. They were looking for a star that would arise from Jacob. Book of Numbers. They're looking for him. And they came and said in Jerusalem, where is he who was born the king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and we have come to honor him? No, we have come to worship him. To worship an infant God? And Herod's scholars said, he's not here. Herod didn't know where he was. Like many politicians, he did not know his Bible. <laughs> they said, no, he's not here. For the book of Micah said 600 years ago, behold Bethlehem from you, one shall go forth for me in all of Israel. And his going forth has been from old, from eternity. And he will shepherd my people with the scepter of God, a shepherd king. And lo, the star that had appeared to them in the east went before them about 10 miles to the south and stood over the house of the child. Heaven knows where the king is. And they found the child with his mother and they laid before him their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they worshiped him. And they left a different way than they came. And God and man had now been reunited. And the child grew up as we do, a common man as we are, working in obscurity like we do, only he was without sin, unlike us. And he was called by hell itself, the Holy One of God. Until his time of public appearance came and John the Baptist, the last of the Old Testament batons, the anchor leg said, behold, he's here. And the father said at his baptism, this is my beloved son. And the spirit descended upon him like a dove. And he called his nation Israel to repent from the deadness of their mechanical religion, to fear the true God. He spake, they said, as no man has ever spake. He did signs and wonders and miracles over demons and disease and disability and over disaster and over death. But men hated the light lest their deeds be reproved. And they rejected him and they lied about him and they plotted concerning him. And then they betrayed him and they arrested him. And in the mockery of a trial, they found him innocent six times and then condemned him simply for who he said he was. And then they beat him and they tortured him. And then they nailed him to a tree. And they surrounded him and they mocked him. And they watched him die slowly to the jeers of the crowd. And they murdered, Peter said, the prince of life. But as he died, the earth went dark and the temple tore in half. And the world upsurged in an earthquake. And the tombs were opened and the recent dead looking for the coming of Messiah came forth. And as the Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, that we like sheep had gone astray, but God caused the iniquity of us all to fall upon him. 
that God commends his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He bore our punishment in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness for by his stripes we are healed. One died for all, said Peter, the just for the unjust that he might introduce us to God. He rose from the dead because death could not hold him judicially in its grasp. It was like Velcro on a cue ball. Augustine didn't say that, I said that. (laughs) And then he ascended into glory and a man, one of our own, made it. where now he sits and he heads a new people on the earth and he gathers to himself his ecclesia, those called out, whereby he evidences to all of the world what will be someday the people of God gathered under Messiah. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord, when the rapture shall occur, amen. And then the great tribulation begin. Peter said, God hath commanded men everywhere to repent, having fixed a day in which he will judge the world through a man. And then at the end of that period, the second coming, he will appear in the eastern sky and every eye will see him and men will call upon the mountains to fall on them, to hide them from the wrath of him who sits upon the throne and from the lamb. And he shall establish the kingdom of God for a thousand years, at the end of which shall be the great white throne judgment and all the wicked of all time shall rise from the dead and Hades will vomit forth the spirits of the lost and there shall be the books opened and there shall be hell and there shall be eternity yawn before men and then the present heaven shall pass away with a roar The elements melt with intense heat and the earth and its works be burned up. Then he will make new heavens and a new earth. What will it look like? We don't know. It's in the mind of God. It is a twinkle in his eye. And it shall be the bridal chamber that he will bestow upon you and me. And in grace, he will carry you and I across the threshold of time and space. And then the holy city shall descend and heaven and earth will be in finality rejoined. And we shall look upon his face and we shall reign forever and live happily ever after. And that started with a baby's cry in a manger that was prophesied in the Garden of Eden that the seed of woman will crush the serpent's head and the serpent will wound his heel. The earliest religion is that a representative man will die for what you did and he will end Satan, yet he himself shall die for our victory. That is magic, amen. That is the super natural, the miraculous, the transcendent, and the glorious. And because of that, everything down here makes sense. The universe, man, the immaterial of man, the body of man, male and female created he them. Sexuality, marriage, government, divine law, right, wrong, history, truth, God, man, redemption, everything. Like those crystal balls you shake up and the the snow goes everywhere. 
when it finally comes to rest, everything settles. That is what God has done. Though still today, still in an unbelieving world, we tell that same old, old story and we sing the same old songs. We eat the same foods. In Texas, you cannot eat cranberry before December the third week. Do you know that? (laughs) They will put you in jail. We decorate a tree with the same ornaments. How many of you decorate your tree with ornaments left you by your parents? I do too. We have the same erroneous manger scenes. (laughs) And we all come to eat the same foods and we love those close to us as God did. And we give gifts as God did. And we sing And listen to Elvis, why can't every day be just like Christmas? (laughs) Thank you. Thank you very much. It's just like the great traditional Christmas movie, Field of Dreams. (laughs) About people with dashed dreams. Kevin Costner is alienated from his father. James Earl Jones, Terrence Mann, is a burned out uh, 60s guy. Burt Lancaster, the doctor who never got a chance to play. Shoeless Joe Jackson and the 1919 White Sox. But a world opens to them and communicates from the outside. and they will come. What the fat, build it, (laughs) and they will come. Is this heaven? No, it's Iowa. (laughs) Ray said, James Earl Jones, people will come from all over, inextricably drawn to the one thing In a modern day where all has gone astray, they'll come to the one thing that doesn't change, baseball. (laughs) Where you have a baseball diamond and you have 90 feet and you have 60 feet, six inches, three strikes and you are out, four balls and you walk. The game isn't over until the last inning, something that doesn't change, just like Christmas. That's why we have a brief period of sanity in our country. When somebody runs you off the road, you go, hey, it's Christmas. (laughs) What's the matter with you? (laughs) Mama, you burned the turkey again. It's Christmas. (laughs) He didn't shut up. Do you not fear God? (laughs) For a brief time, there's something that didn't change. And manger scenes and ornaments and trees and songs that never changed are like the other great classic, Close Encounters. (laughs) Again, a voice from the outside, inextricably drawing you to devil's stump. And everyone, when contact is made, all of a sudden everyone is ecstatic. We're not alone. There's somebody from the outside. We're not alone. There's another world, it's outer space. Salvation, it's not Iowa, it's aliens. But of course, they must be certain aliens. They have to be Baptists. <laughs> I've seen the movies about aliens, they eat you. 
we want Baptist aliens. <laughs> and of course the problem has never changed because now there's a bunch of more finite creatures out there that are just like us, are fellow orphans in a dark world. So aliens just puts off your hope a little longer, your failure a little longer. Don't email me, I don't believe in aliens, all right. <laughs> but both of these stories are just stories. But they kind of show what man is. We want something outside of us. We have no hope in ourselves. Philosophy won't do it. Psychology won't do it. Education won't do it. Capitalism won't do it. Politics won't do it. Pleasure won't do it. Drugs won't do it. Somebody better come to us from the dark and let us know that there's hope outside of us. It better be somebody in Iowa in a cornfield or it better be an alien. The fact is, it is God. It is God. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people because unto you this day in the city of David is born a savior, Christ the Lord. This will be a sign. There's a baby as low as you can go. I bring you good news of great joy. Glory to God in the highest on earth. Peace. Both of these are stories unlike Christmas where God made contact and God gives us a do-over. Y'all know what a mulligan is? All of our life was a bad tee shot. But God let us be born again and he gave us a mulligan. We got to do it again and do it right. Because as Francis Schaeffer said, he is there and he is not silent. Magic indeed. Can I give you my favorite Christmas hymn? Listen to this. A voice from the outside. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts. We traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, the wise men are speaking. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. Frankincense to offer have I. Incense owns a deity nigh. Isn't that good? A deity nigh. God close by. There he is. Prayer and praising, all men raising, worship him, God on high. Myrrh is mine. Its bitter perfume breathes a life of gathering gloom. Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone cold tomb. Glorious now, behold him, arise, King and God and sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia, earth to heaven replies. Can you sing that last refrain with me? Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still proceeding, Guide us to thy perfect light. Contact has been made.
It's a heck of a ringtone. <laughs> Do you know Jesus? I don't mean just did you read about him? Do you give presents about him? Do you sing the songs? You say, I've always known him. No, you haven't. If you did, he wouldn't have need to come. He came because you don't know him. You were conceived in sin and brought forth in iniquity. You're a sinner. And our deeds of righteousness are like filthy rags. And the only way we can get out of it is somebody has to live like we didn't live and die like we ought to die. And God is the only one who can do it to enter into humanity in a womb and go to the cross and rise from the dead and bring about the biggest shift in human history that the Judean worldview would flood among mankind in the monotheism of Christianity. And it would be in keeping with the prophecies from 1500 BC to 400 BC and then fulfilled from AD zero to 33, proclaimed until 70, written about and enjoyed till present day. And we're looking forward to his coming someday. Why don't you get saved tonight? And be able to say, in 2019, I went to a Christmas service at Denton Bible Church. And after hearing the proclamation of Field of Dreams <laughs> and Close Encounters and how it fulfills the deepest needs of men, I believed the gospel message and it got saved. How are we going to know you're saved? You take me to lunch. <laughs> you pay, I pray. Just call me. I'm going to give you my number. I'm going to give you Kendall's number. You call him and he will get hold of me. You call 940-382-0539. I'm in the phone book. I'm the only pastor of a church, 4,000 people that's got his name in the phone book. You call me. We go to lunch. Don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to get with you to hear about your cousins and all that stuff. If you say, you know, I was going to hell until I heard that message, we sit and we eat. Pray with me. Father in heaven, thank you for this Christmas Eve and this Christmas day that all of the world, because Christianity is not confined to a certain area like every other religion, we are Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the outermost parts of the earth. Where two or three are gathered, you are there. We're not the memory of a, of a person or a, of a moral code, but we are the living presence of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit through the word of God in his people. And so Lord, I pray that someone here, that all of their life have gone through the motions of what parents and grandparents and uncles and aunts did, that on this night, at this place, in hearing this message, that Jesus was not a good fellow, that he was the very presence of God on the earth as the eternal son of God in keeping with the prophecies of old, entered into humanity and Mary and grew up just like us, though perfect and died for what we did and rose, that we could come to you, O God, our father, with empty hands of faith, and we could receive into our hearts and into our souls the promise of God and like a seed the word of God could be coupled with human will and God might be born in man once again and that we could be the children of whom he is our elder brother. Father, if there's a girl out there that is lonely, if there is a guy out there that is burned out and to the end of his rope, you through all of the New Testament are the ladies' man. The women love you because you loved them right where they were. And men loved you because you gave them forgiveness and you gave them purpose. You made their life count once again. Once again, we can be Adam and Eve in the garden. We can be fruitful and multiply. We can labor for you. We can subdue the earth. 
We can cultivate it and we can make something where there was nothing. So Father, let Eden be alive in them this night. Might their prayer be right here. Lord God, I have sinned and I am lost. But I thank you that your son came and died for what I did. If I alone had sinned, the cross would look no different. Should you save a billion or one, the transaction had to be the same. And so, Father, this night, I pray that their prayer might be as to those in a stable that I have found room for you, that the world does not want you, that Israel didn't want you, that our, our culture doesn't want you, but I take you as my savior. Come into my life, forgive me of my sin, grant me your life, because Father, I trust only you. Might that be so? And Father, we shall ask this in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen.